Hey guys, it's Tiger here. Before this video starts, I want you guys to click that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. Enjoy! Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Um, so today we are going to be explaining Say It, the season finale, which is episode 10. Um, I've recorded this video before, however... Uh, something happened with the file, of, so I have to record it. Fun. Okay, let's uh, let's just get down to business. It's gonna be a long journey, and I'm ready for it. All right. Uh, this is episode ten. I'll say it. Season 1. I'm not emotionally ready for this episode. <laughs> um, I just want to say uh, this episode is going to be really, really emotional. So, warning to everyone. Disclaimer, some viewers may be sensitive to the topics discussed within this video. You have been warned. So the reason why I did that was because I had to warn people because of the events that happened in this episode. So, yeah, everyone I knew was telling me to put it in, regardless if I didn't want to. Of course I wanted to, though, because it was my idea. Um, but yes, that's why it was a warning. This is a warning to you guys. There's a lot of events in this that can be really, really hurtful or feel like, um... It's just a warning to you guys. If you guys don't like deep conversations or really dark, um, really dark stuff, don't watch this episode. Just skip it. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I'm going to explain it now. So, you've been warned! Are you sure you're able to go to school next week? I'm fine. Why do you worry so much? If I don't recall, you did pass out a couple days ago. Max, I just didn't eat enough that day. That's all. You know that's not the reason. <sighs> can we just start? I really want to get this homework done so I can go back to bed. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Hello? Hey, what's up? Oh, uh, nothing much. How about you? <laughs> Can your face be any more red? Shh. Huh? Oh. Uh, sorry, I'm with Maya right now. Well, I was kind of wondering if you wanted to go out tonight. <laughs> like, like a date? Yeah. Hello? What? Oh, hi. Yeah, uh, sure. Great. I'll pick you up at five. See you then. I swear, do I need to get you a tutor? For what? For not being so awkward around boys. Hey! I'm not awkward around boys. Yeah, and I'm friends with Dylan O'Brien. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> You almost blew out an eardrum. Dear God. I'm excited. Ugh, you're such a girl. Like, OMG. Well, I'm sorry. So, you're saying that if Oliver called right now and asked you out, you wouldn't be excited? Tch, nah. Sure. Let's get back to the homework. Wow, that movie was actually really good. Are you surprised? Yeah, I, I never really go for horror movies, so... Okay, I see. You're more of a romance type of girl. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, nothing. Just, girls usually like romance stuff, right? Mm-hmm. 
Listen, I'm sorry if I... <laughs> it's okay, I'm just pulling your leg. I do actually like romance movies, anime, stuff like that. I just saw a friend, I guess you could say, and she seemed happy. Well, that's good, right? Yeah, really good, actually. She's had a rough time at school, and she seemed really down, but maybe now she's okay. I would hope so. That's Savannah, right? Yeah. I always see Farrah bossing her around, treating her like nothing. It just disgusts me how someone can be so cruel. You haven't tried to stop it? I guess I just never had the balls to. So, I'm sorry for the background noise if you hear something. I have the laundry going on and I have a cat running around. Okay, anyway. So, in this scene was kind of really important because it shows a lot of how... Hello. Ow, that's my hair. It really shows who Peyton truly is. And that's what the scene was supposed to portray. So... You can see that he knew that Savannah was being bullied, and he did nothing about it. He didn't even try. He just watched and let it happen. And that shows how much of a coward he truly is, you know, when he could have stepped in, could have said something, could have told a teacher, principal, anything. And... Oh my gosh, Kat. What are you doing? I'm trying to make a video. Anyway, so, he also mentioned how most girls like romance stuff and girly girl things, you know, and that kind of made Maxine mad because, you know, you don't want to hear that from the person that you're, you know, interested in and kind of dating, you know? Not every girl is the same and Maxine knew this and that's what kind of like triggered her to be like, what? Like, what do you mean? Like, that's not true at all, you know? But, I mean, for her, it kind of was, you know, she likes romance, she likes, you know, kind of like the girly things, whatever. But, she just meant it as in, like, okay, but not every girl is the same, like, we're all different. Hey, can you not bite that? Thank you very much, I swear. I am, like, I'm dealing with a freaking two-year-old. But you're not two, you're, like, four months old. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the video. Okay, bye. Hey, how are you feeling? What do you mean? I heard you passed out last week in the middle of gym class. Yeah, so? What do you mean, so? You could have been hurt. Holly, I'm fine. I still think you're keeping something from me. Are you really having this conversation again? Yes. I know you actually aren't a secret singer or whatever. Secret singer? Huh. <laughs> whatever. It had something to do with singing. You're impossible. You're hot. Um, what? Oh, uh, it's hot outside. <laughs> really? Isn't it like the middle of fall? Actually, no, it's like winter. I'm immune to the cold. Though not awkward conversations. God, you're weird. Hey. At least I'm funny weird. <laughs> okay. You know what? I take back what I said. Which was? Sorry guys, my cat literally has a thing for wanting to go behind my computer and like, ugh. Okay, anyway, let's just get into the video. Okay, yeah, that is totally what you said. But seriously, I know you're not telling me something, Maya. Just tell me. Okay, if I tell you... You can't tell anyone. So far, Maxine is the only one who knows. Also, you have to continue being my friend. 
Of course, nothing could make me stop being your friend. Okay, just come over here. Wow. What? Trying to get me alone? Ugh, shut up. Look, what I'm trying to tell you is serious. I'm trusting you. Okay, I'm putting my serious face on. <sighs> my heart. It isn't good. What do you mean? You have one of the sweetest hearts. Ollie, I... I mean, medically. What? I'm sick. I have a heart condition. It's called coronary artery disease. And it's not getting any better. You can't tell anyone. Ever. I, I won't. I'm sorry. For what? For what's happening to you? You don't need to be sorry. I've gotten used to the fact that I won't get better. Don't say that. You will get better, I promise. Don't make promises that you can't keep. It's not something you can fix. Well, I... Can you just promise me one thing? Depends. Do we actually have to do stuff? Well, yeah. Then no. <sighs> just please promise to stay by my side. I'll always be by your side, Holly. Good. Never leave. The scene was really, really important because, you know, Oliver didn't know and he needed to know what he was getting himself into, and I really like this scene because it was one of my favorite scenes back in season one, and still is one of my favorite scenes in season one. Um, they match so well together, and usually, um, if this was me in my shoes, I would assume that the guy would, you know not be my friend anymore, he wouldn't be interested in me anymore, but that's obviously not Oliver, that's not the case. Um, I like how Oliver is literally like one of her best friends and he's, you know, always there for her and he's always gonna be like, be there for her, to hold her hand, anything that she needs. And I think that's something really, really amazing in Maya's life and that's something that she just, you know, really, really needs in her life, you know, besides Maxine, but this is, you know, different. It's, you know... It's a love interest, you know, that will never fail you or leave you. And I think that's really, really important for Maya in her life, especially like right now and during the seasons to come. Um, and I liked the fact that they have this like awkwardness and then they can be serious with one another when they need to be. And I think this scene just brought them really, really close together. And I know a lot of people really, really shipped them in season one because of this one scene. And, um, well, if you guys don't know, spoiler alert, <laughs> obviously they are, you know, dating in the future. And they are honestly one of the biggest ships in the series. And they are the longest couple going on in the series. And I think that's amazing. So, I heard you went out with Peyton last night. So? Maxine. What? He's using you. No, he's not. Why don't you believe me? Why should I? Bryn, you got rid of me a long time ago. You have zero rights to my personal life. 
He'll hurt you, Maxine. Why can't you just let me have something nice in my life? I honestly would never believe anything you say from now on. Just go away, Run. You're wasting your time. Whatever. You do you. I guess I'll just stop trying to be so nice. Don't come to me when you need a shoulder to cry on. It might have just been me, but watching season one and like season two where they would always bicker at one another was one of my favorite things to watch because you can see the development between the two, how Maxine was so forward in the beginning and now like she's pulling back and how he was distant in the beginning and now he's pulling forward. And I, I really liked the concept of that because it was kind of like a, a push and pull thing. If you get what I'm feeling. I think it was really cool. And I honestly, these are my favorite scenes. You know, obviously before, you know, spoiler alert, before, they, you know, they got together and everything. But I loved this couple so much. Like, I would just cry. <laughs> it was just, uh, I, I loved making scenes like this because it was so real. And I try to make it as real as possible as much as I can because I wanted people to feel like you know Maxine is just pulling away now and she just she needs to get over Ren and Ren doesn't like the fact that she's like giving up so he's like pulling towards her more and I think that's a great concept Ew. What? This sandwich is gross. Really, Max? It's a sandwich. Eat it. You eat it. Please don't start. I don't want to hear it. What are you doing? Sitting. Eating. Why are you sitting next to me? Is there a law that says I can't? No. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay, fine. That's what I thought. Beric, hey, what's up? I found this note. Let me see. So I'm going to read this to you guys, or you can just pause it and read it, but it says... Bear, I am so sorry for everything. I'm sorry you had to deal with me. I can't go on pretending that I'm okay. I can't lie anymore. I just want it to all stop. It hurts so much. I'm sorry. Please tell everyone I said goodbye. I'll no longer be their problem. I love you, Bear. Please don't come looking for me. Goodbye. P.S. I'll be watching over you. No, no. What? No, 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 no. No, no. A lot of people also actually question this too. I think a lot of people question the fact that Maxine didn't tell anyone else. Like, why didn't she tell anyone else? You know, blah, blah, blah. If it were me in the situation and I knew a friend of mine was hurting themselves or was going to hurt themselves, especially be on the rooftop and, you know, obviously I wouldn't want a lot of people to be up there. Um... I mean, it can go both ways. Some people, like more people up there might have helped or having too many people could have pressured her more and want to do it even like more at the minute. Or going alone, it's a little harder, but you can probably maintain it depending. Um, obviously, I didn't include the fact that teachers and principals didn't know about this until after the fact that it, you know, the whole situation happened. <laughs> Um, but yeah, okay, I'm just going to get to the scene. <laughs> no, Savannah, wait! I'm coming up, please, 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 please. 
Savannah. Savannah! Max. Don't. Just hold on. Okay? D don't move. Max, I can't do this anymore. I can't live like this. You have no idea what your life holds for you. I don't see a life anymore, Maxine. This isn't living. Every day is a step closer to your own happiness. You have to fight through it, Savannah. I thought that I could keep it all in, to not burden people with my problems. I thought I was important. I feel so useless, Max. Do you know what that feels like? To feel like nobody cares, that nobody wants to be your friend? But how would you know, huh? You have Maya, Oliver, Alex. What do I have to live for, Maxine? Tell me. Beric, he loves you, Savannah. I'm your friend and so is Maya. We love you. Your parents love you. They don't love me, Max. They never did. It was a mistake. A mistake that can't be undone. But I can do it for everyone. Don't say that! You are so deep into your own depression that you just can't see the light. I'll be that light for you, Savannah. I'll stand by your side. I'll help you through anything. I've always been here for you, Savannah. I've always wanted to help you, but you've always pushed me away. I'm sorry that you feel like there is nothing to live for. No one should ever go through that. But you can't let Farrah's words get into your head. You can't let her control you. You can't let her win. You have to keep going, Savannah. No, I don't. Don't do this, Savannah. Please. Nothing you say is helping me change my mind. Stay where you are, Max! Savannah... I can't stand here seeing you like this. I don't want to do it anymore, Maxine. I don't want to. Please. I'll help you. Please let me help you. I can't put that on you. I don't care. Lean on me. I don't want to bring you down with me, Max. What about Bear, huh? What about him? He's in love with you, Savannah. He's been there for you all along. He'll find someone new. That's easier said than done. I'm done playing Farrah's game. This is your life that you're talking about. What do you want me to do, Max? I can't! I just can't do this anymore! Savannah. Goodbye, Maxine. help you. I promise.
Okay, so... Meow to you too, honey bear! What's up? Do you want to be at this part of the video? So this scene was really, really important, obviously. Um, I wanted to put it in because I feel like not a lot of people talk about these things and they're very, very serious. And I hate to admit that I've been in a situation sort of like this. Not as terrible as this, but I do remember my friend trying to- Don't bite that! Trying to take her own life, and I was basically the only one there for her to talk to and to get through it. Thankfully, she did listen to me, and she didn't, you know, hurt herself anymore. She didn't do anything like that. I've always had a few friends back in the day who used to hurt themselves a lot, and I was too young to understand why they would hurt themselves or what it meant and how dangerous it was. If you guys are hurting yourselves or you have those sort of thoughts, I'm going to leave a call that you guys can go to, maybe a website or two, to go and help yourselves. It's obviously not an okay thing. I do suggest talking to your parents or guardian about it. I do suggest maybe going to therapy, a doctor, anyone that could possibly help you because again, these things, they're not okay and they're very dangerous and they need to be, you know, they need to go away. <laughs> um, every person is very, very important and they we're made into this world with a reason, and no one is ever, 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 ever a mistake in this world. Everyone was made for a reason, and there is truly no one in this world who was a mistake. Believe me, when I was younger, I thought I was a mistake. I thought my parents didn't want me. Obviously, they did not plan me when I was born. Uh, I was just a surprise, but later on, my mom did tell me I was okay with having three kids. I love you unconditionally, and you were just a big happy surprise for us, and that made me feel a lot better about it, and knowing that God created me was a huge thing for me, and I realized that everyone was made for a reason. There's no one in this world who was here for a, like a mistake. No one's ever a mistake. But please go and help yourselves if you're having this issue. Um, I'm going to talk about the scene a little bit now. Obviously, this scene was kind of inspired by a video game, which was Life is Strange. Um, I didn't mean for Maxine to exactly have the same name in the game. Like, that didn't even process to me. But it happened. <laughs> um, and I wanted this scene to be kind of different than it was in the game. However... There just wasn't a scenario I could really do other than this part. Um, <clears throat> and in this scene, it was really hard for me to edit, even write, or even voice act it because I wanted it to be real and I wanted people to understand that it's not okay, that people are always going to be there for you, everyone loves you, and you know, that you're not alone in this world. You're not the only one in this world who feels pain. And who, you know, has a darkness to, you know, their sides. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. There were multiple times where I wanted to hurt myself. But I never did because I never had the courage to. Um, thank goodness for that. And there were times where I even wanted to end it all. But all of my, you know, kind of my attempts never really worked. And I just, I couldn't do it. I just, I felt way too bad about it. And then I started thinking... My parents are going to miss me. My sisters are going to miss me. And then I thought of everyone in my life who would actually miss me and that it wasn't worth it. None of it was worth taking my own life. God gave me a life and I don't want to commit a sin by just deleting what he created. Because there's no one like me in this world. You know, everyone is unique in their own ways. There's no one like you. And I thank God every day that I didn't go through with any of my attempts. And I don't usually talk about this kind of stuff on here because I don't want anyone to worry, obviously. But I want you guys to know that I've been in that position and I never really told anyone. I didn't even tell my own parents. 
but I want you to guys know that I'm doing wonderful, and that's because I have the best friends in the world. I have the best fiance in the world. I have the best family. I know a lot of people don't have any of those, and I'm just going to tell you this. You're going to be okay. All right? Everyone is going to be okay. It gets better. You just have to push through. Find the right friends. Find the right lover or, you know, if you want, just be your by yourself if you want. If that's what you want, then good for you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, just know you're not alone in it. And I have helped so many people with situations like this and... I've been carrying it with me for a while, and I don't mind carrying that kind of weight because I'm helping someone, and I hope this helps you guys too. So please, please, please check the description if you guys are going through anything like this, hurting yourselves, or have really, really bad thoughts, um, or even if you think you have depression or something, please just go to it, and I promise results will turn up. Um, but anyway, let's watch the end of this, and we'll just call it a video. <laughs> That's Vin... Savannah, you <laughs> didn't say it. It was really fun. To play her, and I mean, for my first voice acting gig, I think it's worth the experience. I'm glad to have been able to be a part of it. For everyone that's liked to say it, well, keep liking it. <laughs> bye bye. Guys, like, I have no idea, like, how would this even happen, like, so fast, like. <laughs> Honestly, to me, it felt like yesterday, like, say it was just, you know, in the early phases, and I, I don't know, it's just like, little babies all grown up, like, I don't know, I'm just like, uh, it's so, it's just a great feeling seeing how something everyone works so hard on, and there's so much effort put into this series, just to see it, like, coming to, not an end, because I don't want to say an end, because, you know, stay tuned for season two, but, you know. I don't know, it's just, I loved everything about Say It. Like, I loved voicing Alex, even though, you know, she's not a major character. She's, just, she's so special to me because, you know, it was the first character I ever got to voice. And I don't know, it just gave me so much experience. And I'm really, really grateful for everyone I met, like, working through this. And then I'm grateful for all the friends I made and, like, just everything i don't know i'm saying i don't know a lot but i don't know i don't know guys uh. hey it's spotted shark voice of ren i just want to thank everyone for the support for the first season of say it everyone involved has done such an amazing job and i had a blast voicing ren and uh i know ren has been such a frustrating character so far but you know everyone has issues and not everyone can hide them forever so prepare for the next season it's gonna be great. I actually have, like, no words on <laughs> on how this went. Wow, season one is completed. It's done. It's out there in the world. And I am so, so proud of that. I've worked so hard on this, and I know my team has as well. Um, I'm just going to say a few things and then I'm going to jump into talking about Maxine and on the next season. Uh, thank you so much to all of my body actors. Thank you so much for putting your time and your effort into helping me make this series come alive. Really, honestly, thank you. I also want to thank my co-writers for giving ideas for this season and I honestly appreciate everyone's hard work they have put into this. Um, thank you to my main writers, um, my coordinators, my leads. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much 
for your effort into this. I know you guys had a lot to do and I cannot thank you enough. I really can't. <laughs> and my builders, thank you for building everything. Just thank you, especially Ray. You made the school look amazing and it's beautiful and I honestly cannot thank you enough for that. And the houses, oh, beautiful. Love them. Thank you. <laughs> and most importantly, thank you to my voice actors. Thank you to each and every one of you. This season was amazing and it was really, really the best. And I couldn't ask for better voice actors. Uh, <laughs> I really hope you guys are excited for season two as much as I am. Uh, <laughs> just thank you to everyone in general, even my fans. Thank you for supporting this series my channel uh you guys are honestly the best you guys are so loving and caring and you guys are really really patient with me and that's all i could ever ask for i'm going to jump into talking about season two um i am really really excited about season two mainly because i've written a little bit for it and honestly it is just way better than season one and it's just it develops so much in every character i've ever created it's going to explain so much to everyone i know a lot of you have a lot of questions on a few things such as like why ren is the way that he is what happened to maxine's mom like what what happened there i know you guys are probably going to wonder what's going to happen to savannah what's going to happen to Beric, farah and everything will be answered in season two i promise you in 2018 everything will be explained season two is really going to be this amazing story and i really am hoping that you guys are going to love it as much as i do i want to talk about maxine a little bit <laughs> so Maxine is one of my favorite characters to voice act for. She's just amazing. She's so caring and loving and brave and determined. You know, she puts others before herself. Oh, I love her. <laughs> but, you know, she does have her times where, you know, she has to go to therapy and she has to deal what she deals with. But she doesn't, like, let that get in her way, you know? she has her friends to support her her father to support her and she knows that you know she's loved but you know she does go through hard times just like everybody else she's you know not just this perfect girl you know she has her own troubles and she's normal just like the rest of us there's so many different things between griffin and maxine and it amazes me how much i can develop in two characters and Maxine is just one of the best characters I could have created. She has such this backstory that I love, and I can't wait for you guys to learn more about her in season two. It's honestly just amazing. That's all I can say. It's like, it's amazing. Next season is going to develop Maxine in so many ways, and I think you guys are going to be able to kind of connect to her in season two more than in season one maybe you did connect her in season one i don't know uh, everyone has a different story <laughs> but yeah uh i really do hope you guys liked season one it was amazing it was honestly one of the best things ever i can't believe that i created this a year ago i wrote this a year ago and now it's finally finished and i i can't believe it it's it's mind-blowing i finished two two role plays and that's a lot for me emotionally <laughs> but i know there's going to be a lot more role plays out there and one of those is season two for say it i hope you guys like this video make sure to give it a like make sure to subscribe to become a cub <laughs> hit that notification button so you can see when I upload more role plays or other videos that I have. <laughs> Put in the comments what you thought of this season. Tell me what you think is going to happen in season two. And yeah, just remember to, to say it, guys. Oh, also, you guys can go and purchase the merch that I have. I have Say It merch, Griffin's Diary merch. 
my own merch. <laughs> I even have meth merch. Mm hmm I do. So go check it out, guys. It'll be in the description down below. You can also go and pledge to my Patreon where you can get rewards in return. And you can even get spoilers on a few role plays and things that are coming to my channel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Merry Christmas. Alrighty guys, well that is the end of the video. I have nothing else to explain. Just thank you guys so much for helping me with season one. And thank you guys so much for the support for the season one. And it was amazing, it was great, it was popular. Um, and I can't thank you guys enough for letting me allow, uh, wait what? <laughs> for allowing me to do this series. I really, really love it. It's one of my favorites I've ever done um, by far and I really can't wait to explain season two and season three, especially season three and a little bit of season two I'm really excited for. Um, but yeah, if you guys are enjoying the series so far, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe to Mugabu Cup if you aren't already. And like she said, I do have a Patreon where you guys can go and, you know, support my channel and get rewards in return such as like getting art from me or render of your character from Minecraft or you can even be in a video with me and collab with me. Um, and you can get your own special Discord rank that others won't have. Um, and there's a lot of other rewards like getting spoilers and yeah. Uh, so just check it out. All my social media is down in the description down below for you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Say bye, Luna. Bye. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>